I got a talent, didn't I? Wow. Level 3 costs 10 points. And I think I just got one point from being relatable, I think is what it said. Which I think ultimately put a point into manipulation. Um, there was a pop-up over here that explained where my points were coming from before, but it's not here now. I don't see... I don't know where relatable... Oh, trait would be relatable. Yep, one more point into... Is reliable. So if you get the letter, you get a point into ma manipulation. Okay, so my stats are going to be affected by all sorts of things outside of my actual spending of points. That's interesting. I'm going to try something real quick. Because the hitching is still kind of happening. Let's exit out. I'm going to try this... Supposed guaranteed f uh, 30 frames per second mode. Constant, which is supposed to require V-Sync being on. Continue. We'll see if that gets rid of the hitching. That's not a good sign. I kind of saw it there for a second there. It's definitely still happening. If anything, I might have only lowered the frame rate. I don't know. Oh yeah, that doesn't help at all. That doesn't even help a little bit. Yeah, I wish I knew why it's doing that. My game should have no trouble- I should have no trouble handling, handling this with a 1070 and an i7 and everything. So it seems to be like a weird background problem. It's just- just like a... Something that's not- something I'm not gonna be able to fix, basically. That's fine. Lord Mortimer certainly has a taste for staging rooms. Ooh, what's that? What, no, what is that? Oh, is that just a you can't do that symbol? Yeah, maybe it just means you can't open the door. Let us poke around diligently. It says go back to the group near the chimney. I'll avoid that as long as possible, thank you. Crucifixion of St. Peter. He was crucified upside down, out of humility. Surprising for an entrance hall. Interesting choice. It's always weird when it's just in your house, like, yeah, here's just the, an image of, uh, you know, a man being what's essentially tortured to death as a painting. I mean, it could be worse. They could have, like, the painting of, uh, what is it? That one Greek god devouring his sons? It was, a uh, Odin? Was it, I think it was Odin's dad or something? Not, sorry, not Odin. Uh... I think it was Zeus's father devouring his sons or something. Blind Oedipus. Blinded himself. What a tragic destiny. Ooh. Devil's Thorn. Devil's Thorn grants you the exalted state. You temporarily see the immunities and vulnerabilities affecting a dialogue choice in a conversation. You cannot carry more than five. Ooh. So I can use Devil's Thorn via the D-pad during a conversation to find out what the immunities and vulnerabilities are of that, of who I'm talking to, essentially. Or not, not literally just straight up see them, but I think it'll show me if a particular stat uh, has a vulnerability or an immunity. Which means that I would be, it'd be a way of discovering whether or not that character was immune to science, for example. Fall of the Damned by Rubens. The man who cannot achieve the salvation of God the Father is offered to fall into the depths of the abyss. What a cheery lobby. It's almost like this is... It's almost like the game knows, or the host knows, that this game's probably going to essentially be like Clue, right? Probably gonna be like a murder in the house, or trying to solve things. Like, I think that's the direction it's probably going in. Lives of the Noble Greeks and Romans by Plutarch, a biography of the great men. Opened Brutus's page. Caesar, stabbed by multiple blows at once, sees Brutus raise the dagger on him. Then, covering his head with his robe, he delivers himself to the arms of the conspirators. Nice family. Let's keep it. Might come in handy someday. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna steal your book. Give me a second. 
Just, this is mine now. You can't have it. It's mine. Ooh. Gives you conviction points. Interesting. It's only one skill point, though, that's worth remembering, is that it doesn't give you... It doesn't give you act an actual rank of the skill. It gives you one point, which takes a while to stock up. Still is a decent way of acquiring skills that I'm not trained in. Maybe I should introduce myself to the other guests first. Yeah, well, you, you set up going back to the group at, near, near the chimney as being my objective, so immediately I'm like, can I go elsewhere first? What kind of edge might I be able to gather? Perhaps nothing. I thought my chimney was big, but this one is beyond belief. It's the least one can say. I've been longing for a warm fire for ages. Since I set foot on the island, I haven't ventured more than two yards away from it. Have you also just arrived? Oh, late morning, I'd say. Louis, come join us. Monsieur, may I introduce you to Monseigneur His Eminence, Cardinal Piaggi? He joins us straight from Rome. Oh, just call me Your Eminence. It's simpler. George Washington, President of the United States of America. Delighted at last to make your acquaintance, Mr. President. Pleased to meet you, Mr. President. Louis Maurras de Richet. It is an honor to meet you. Young man, let's keep it simple, please. Let us forget our fancy titles. Nice to meet you, Louis. I should imagine you never thought you'd be in such company. I must admit that I didn't. It's the first time that I've ever met so many illustrious personalities. And you haven't seen anything yet. Generally, when Lord Mortimer organizes one of his receptions, there are over a dozen people here. They can't all be here yet. And you'll see, most of the time there's only the upper crust. And I noticed you were already getting to know his eminence at the entrance. It's the perfect place to build up a network. What were you talking about, if you'll forgive my indiscretion? Ah, uh, diversion and etiquette. I'm not- I'm not a smooth talker. Except for that one part where I am a smooth talker. At the risk of disappointing you, we weren't conspiring in our corner, sir. His eminence was simply telling me that he knew my mother and how much he held her in high esteem. It so happens that Monsieur de Riche's mother is to join us. Oh, pity. No scrumptious gossip or juicy tidbits, unmentionable secrets, or even money matters. But you'll see, it will come. Despite all the goodwill in the world, you can't stop people scheming left and right around oh, here. Speak for yourself, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friends, do any of you know the reason why we're here this time? Not in the slightest. As for me, I've been invited by Sir Horn, a close friend of Lord Mortimer, but uh, I do not know the reason why. You see, Louis, every time Lord Mortimer organizes a reception, he always finds a moment to set up a chat with all the guests. During which time we remake the world. Accompanied by gallons of absinthe and cussing, I'll leave you to imagine the result. So, if I understand rightly, Monsieur de Richet, you've come out here to join your mother. For what reason, exactly? Lord Mortimer asked me to come as quickly as possible to find my mother, who seems to have disappeared during her stay here. Ah. Oh. I took the first boat, and here I am. I'm so sorry. Don't be, sir. It's not your fault. Seriously, though, I know your mother well. Stay behind with me afterwards and we'll take a moment to speak about her. Good Lord! Washington is wearing the emblem of the Grand Master of the Golden Order. It's the highest distinction of the Order in the United States. It puts him on par with my mother. He must really know his stuff when it comes to the occult. Good evening, my friends! Holy shit! That's the man for my vision. An urgent case has delayed our host, Lord Mortimer. He can't be present this evening, and he sends his deepest apologies. He's asked me here and he hasn't even turned up? Great start. He's a nightmare. Do you know that man? Sir Gregory Holm, an English aristocrat. Very influential. He's also close to Lord Mortimer. 
So don't be surprised if he acts like he's at home. And now, my dear guests, a light meal is served in the small salon. For those who would like to, you're invited to follow me into the next room. My dear fellow, you must have read my thoughts. I shall follow. We'll have to be careful not to make too much noise. One of Lord Mortimer's guests is relaxing. Oh, we shall be quiet. Don't take it the wrong way, Sir Holm, but I have already eaten. Thus, I shall be happy to remain by the fireside. Just got a comment. Was not expecting to just casually walk into the same room as the first president of the United States. And I also wasn't expecting him to then say uh, the phrase, seriously, though, <laughs> which is amusing. I guess I should expect all sorts of characters like this in if we're dealing with like basically like Freemason Illuminati nonsense as being like the premise of the game. All right. That's scaled up quickly from uh, English politician. I don't know well to boom your original president. That guy, though, that guy I walked in, he's a nightmare man, and he looks like a splicer, and I don't trust him at all. If you don't mind, Gregory, I should like to keep Mr. Washington company. Please feel at home. And you, sir? If I stay with Washington, we'll be able to speak about my mother. But on the other hand, I'd like to learn more about this home. I saw him in my vision. Ah. Uh... Who do we go after? Interesting character that could have important information for me and it could be an ally versus Nightmare face <laughs> It's the only way to put it man. I don't want to look at him. I Feel like a basic level of just touching base here at the beginning could be really important. Let's go for that Let's see what Washington has to say Sir if you don't mind I shall stay here do exactly as you please, young man. Louis, thank you for staying. Just like you, when I arrived this morning, I found out that Sarah had gone missing. I know your mother well. Curious about that? We got a little update here. Sir Gregory Holm, Baron of Nottingham, is a very influential British aristocrat who makes terrible cosmetic choices and looks like uh, a lot of people's mothers, really, uh, grandmothers. Uh, oh, wow, look at the hair coming out of that mole. That's, hmm. All that work for the makeup, but you're not going to cut the mole hair at all. Although the makeup's a weird mess, isn't it? Like, it looks like he doesn't know how to put it on or somebody didn't know how to put it on. It's splotchy. Confirmed royalist, Sir Gregory Holm spent his career extending the influence of the United Kingdom throughout the world. From the flourishing East India Company to the Spanish trading posts in America, he stamped his hallmark on key decisions made by the world's preeminent economic power. In England, he contributed to the reduction of the natural, national debt and being very attached to family values, he invested time in the working class, creating charity schools in order to offer a decent education to the future links and in next industrial revolution. A network builder, Holm always finds pleasure in attending the social gatherings of his old friend, Lord Multimer. Hmm. Anyone else new? Oh yeah, straight up, George Washington is just in here. It appears that his uh, portraitist was a bit flattering, which I think all portraits are, probably. George Washington is the founding father and first president of the United States of America. Washington shared his life between military and political success. Very early on, he was introduced by Sarah de Rochelle to the upper circles of an influential secret society from France, the Golden Order. He later took the helm of the American branch. Tired of politics, he wanted to retire to his property in Virginia, but that was without taking into account Lord Mortimer, who encouraged him to come out of retirement. On the advice of his friend, he ran for a second term and was successful. Invited by Mortimer to his island, Washington likes to attend such social gatherings incognito. So this is the second term of President Washington. Is, where, is exactly where we are time-wise now. Wow, you're a nightmare. Anyone else getting a... Uh, mm, sexy, brutal memories right about now when you look at these these uh, servants? 
might be a good companion series to check out along with this one if you haven't if you have not played or watched the sexy brutal yet don't worry emily is from the english branch of the golden order and president washington is in fact the leader of the order in the united states i i didn't know sorry to have made you wait but i didn't want to speak in front of the others you did well secrecy and discretion are the pillars of our organization if I can help in any way at all, please don't hesitate to ask, my lad. And if you have any other questions, now's the time. Nothing is more important than secrecy, which is why we are loudly, not necessarily loudly, but we're talking into an, we're talking in a big echoing room where the echoing is noticeable, so we are not exactly speaking quietly. So ask about Mortimer or where they, uh, where does Emily know the mother from? That's worth that's worth questioning because Emily is apparently going to be murdered by mother, which raises all sorts of questions if they're from the same organization. Oh, well, that's probably why Emily trusted her with whatever information she was willing to give in that vision. And you, Emily, what do you think of my mother? I only know her through the order. The one time we met, we only exchanged a few words in a corridor of Parliament. And was the exchange courteous or impassioned? I'm not sure if I understand. Was there any reason for her to be angry with you? Under other circumstances, I would slap your face for even asking, but I'll put your lack of tact down to her disappearance. Know that your mother is a woman I would love to work with. Her reputation is entirely deserved. Mr. Washington will be able to tell you more. Mr. Washington, you seem to be very familiar with my mother. Okay, so my character is also thinking about the vision, and that's why she he, he, he asked a question about the anger, because he's trying to fish for why the hell she's going to get murdered. So he seems to us, he, I think, uh, I think he's under the impression that his visions are true, right? And so he's used to them or something? Where did you first meet her? I met Sarah during the War of Independence on American soil. She was introduced to me by a mutual acquaintance, and I must say that her sound advice prevented me from making some terrible mistakes. She may not be a soldier, but believe me, she deserves a statue as much as Lafayette does. Well, I didn't see that one coming. There's no doubt Mother has many secrets that are still hidden. Right. Would it be too much if I asked you a few more questions? Not at all. Go ahead. But I can't promise I'll remember everything. May I ask, when you saw each other, what did you talk about? Rather political. That's not what I can do. Or the Golden Order, perhaps? Or the mysterious mysteries that surround us? What did you talk about, followed by or? What? I don't know if that sentence structure works, does it? My mother has always been fascinated by strange powers. Did she talk to you about anything like that? Yes. Her facility for discerning truths from rumor served me well. Such as preventing massacres, like the one at Salem, from happening again. Or convincing people that horsemen cannot ride around without heads. <laughs> what was it that she used to say now? Keep an open and logical mind? Yes, that's it. Thank you, sir. I was hoping to speak with Lord Mortimer. At least now I have some information, thanks to you. I repeat, Lord Mortimer is a man of his word. You won't be disappointed. And I am persuaded that your mother's research is his main concern. Mother still is at the head of the Golden Order. I find it difficult to believe that she came to this island without notifying the other members. As for myself, I did not know. I am here at the request of Sir Holm, a situation regarding the Crown of England to resolve, and to see what Lord Mortimer has to propose to us. As for me, Lord Mortimer asked me here to speak about the future of America. I did not know that your mother would even be among us. In any case, no one has yet mentioned associating the Order. We haven't found many clues yet.
but I did find a book that belongs to my mother. Where did you find it? That's what worries me. I found it hidden on the wharf. Do you think she was preparing to discreetly leave? I don't know. An extremely likely proposition. I'll believe it when I see it. Don't worry, Louis. I'm sure nothing bad has happened to her. Yes, I, I hope not. Careful, they're coming back. Well, I am impressed with all this splendor. But don't spend too much time with Mr. Washington, my dear, or you'll lose your pretty accent. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to be intrigued by that statue. Absolutely. It is remarkable. Lord Mortimer is fond of atypical works of art. I won't disguise the fact that I find it all a little megalomaniacal. But I must say, he does have some outstanding pieces. Wait, he actually has it. Wait, I was joking, but he actually has it. The statue is impressive, and so are the paintings. Rubens, the Caravage, Gagnero. Lord Mortimer has very good taste, and the means to express it. Oh, I see our young sir is a connoisseur. Yes, in my spare time. Yet, I couldn't tell you who the artist of that painting there is. I think I recognize a theme, but the style intrigues me. Oh my god, I was joking. I was joking about a morbid painting I know about, and it's the exact painting I happened to not look at, apparently. Holy crap. Uh, who was it? Is it Apollo devouring his sons? It's someone devouring his sons, and it's, there's two different names because... Uh, yeah, there's two different names. I think it was the father of Zeus or something like that, and I think that... Uh, God damn it. It was a... Uh, he, he heard a prophecy that uh, that his sons would defeat him and usurp him, so he would... every time, Whenever he had a son, he would devour them whole. In the, uh, in, in the actual myth, he would just swallow them, because there was a lot of Greek... There was a lot of old gods that would just swallow each other and stuff like that, and it was no big deal. But there was a painter, and he was, uh, he was essentially, like, he was in his, I think he was in his final years. I think he might have been even dying of sickness. I think he was, uh, I think he was even deaf or something like that. And, uh, he just, in his madness or whatever, or in, in his fury, his despair, whatever, whatever state he was in, in his final years, he was just painting on the walls around his house, I believe. And what's, and the distressing thing's supposed to be that like none of those paintings really were like meant to be seen by anyone else necessarily. They were essentially for him. They weren't put in galleries, they weren't sold. He just was painting them on walls, these murals, and then, uh, and then he died, I think, and that's it. I, wow, the exact painting I was thinking of. Okay, so I, um, I entrusted them with a little piece of information because they're members of the Golden Order. That might be a mistake, because the game there are warnings to not trust anyone, just plastered right on the game's page. And uh, the first twist you would go for is that the people that are from your organization are not to be trusted. So let's not be too surprised when this goes poorly for me, I suppose. Saturn devouring his son. Oh, well, you wouldn't know. The artist is none other than Lord Mortimer. I thought for a long time that the painting wasn't finished, but my old friend assured me it was. Still, there's no accounting for taste. Not very conventional, but it sure does hold your attention. You'll find that Lord Mortimer is not what one would call conventional, Monsieur de Richet. Sir Hall, who was that young lady with you? Elizabeth Adams, Mr. President. She would have liked to have stayed with us, but the poor thing is exhausted. Elizabeth Adams? Miss okay, I just double checked because I'm I was concerned. I'm like, what? No, I'm not playing. This game doesn't take place in the house of that artist, right? No, uh, it was he was it was painted by the Spanish artist Francisco Goya. Let's see if I can get the year here. Yeah, it's uh. Yeah, it's Saturn or Titan are his two actual names. 
for that. And I was actually correct when I said Greek. I thought I was... Yeah, okay. Sure. Uh, the work was one of the 14 black paintings that Goya uh, painted directly onto the walls of his house sometime between 1819 and 1823. It was transferred to canvas after Goya's death and has been held in the Museo del Prado in Madrid. So apparently, uh, we're living in the house of somebody who likes to steal credit for other people's work. Or the idea is that the conspiracy Illuminati answer is that he actually painted it and Francesco Goya never existed. Oh my god. Adams is here to rest. You have perhaps already come across her in the corridors. She arrived a few days ago. I perceived her, but we weren't introduced. Rest assured, she is not here for the same reasons as yourselves. Consequently, I'm counting on your indulgence. On that note, it's very late. You must be exhausted. The servant will accompany you to your rooms. Game's very vocal at the moment about how many things I'm missing, which is good and bad. One, it's, yeah, it's mild, mildly distracting, but it is nice to be very aware of just how many branching things there are, which is sometimes not clear. This, this is who we saw go by before. Elizabeth Adams is the daughter of John Adams, a vice president of the United States. Elizabeth was rejected by her parents at birth and declared stillborn. Brought up in isolation, she grew into a frail young woman with bipolar disorder devoured by her terrible fits of anxiety. Her deepest secrets were slowly gnawing away at her from inside. Despite numerous treatments, nothing could cure her, and the young woman continued to descend into folly. As a friend of Sir Gregory Holm and Lord Mortimer, John Adams decided to send his daughter to Lord Mortimer's manor in the hope that he could help her. With little help, uh, with little hope, Elizabeth has now been at the manor for a short while. Ladies, gentlemen, I bid you all good night. Mr. President, your eminence, Duchess, you have the same rooms as usual. You, Monsieur de Richet, will find your room at the end of the corridor. Well, my friends, I am bone tired. I am off to my bed. See you in the morning. Good night, sir. I shall do likewise. Louis, I shall see you in the morning. Sleep well. Good night. See you tomorrow. Oh, man. It's been quite a day. Right. Where is my room? It's at the end of the hall, but I'm going to avoid that if I can. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Can you enter rooms? You cannot. Are we all set to retire for the night? Said end of the corridor. Is this the end of the corridor? I want to go the opposite of where he said to go, but I don't know for sure what the end of the corridor means. Duke Manuel Godoy. It might be the one at the end here. Anything that stands out. Using these kinds of paintings is free, right? Due to how copyright works, you just plop it right in. I'm not really sure. Huh, that's me. That's my room, which means I'm definitely avoiding it. Let's poke around. Monsignor, his eminence, Cardinal Piaggi. I guess the real instruction was go find the room that has your name on it, and that's your room. Because it definitely isn't the end of the corridor. There's plenty more corridor. Ooh, more royal jelly. Are you jelly about all this jelly I've got? Can't use that door. How big is this place? Ooh, can I open that? No. Nope. I won't lie, I'm still psyched about the fact that I just called out a painting that was there. 
misremember the names, but you know, it's hard to remember a name when it's actually multiple Isn't names. George Washington. George Washington. I am an ally of George Washington in this game, and it's not even Assassin's Creed, which was, uh. <laughs> The one, the game where I quit playing Assassin's Creed for the forever. <laughs> that was the game that broke me. I was on board until then. I completed every game, 100% single player, every collectible, everything. Chinese coin. But then I got that damn, uh, got, got the three and I'm like, I can't even bring myself to beat the campaign, let alone complete it. Probably can't go anywhere really, but coins are supposed to give you experience. And you never know when you fi might find some kind of secret. More collector coins. Up to three collector coins overall. My experience meter does not seem to be filling at all, so I think that you get some sort of... There must be chapters of some kind in this game, which is what they're calling a quest. And then when a quest transitions, you must get, you must get experience based on how many coins you found, or other things you did, and then get to spend points that you're given on different skills, and then you probably also get to equip those manuscripts. So I was able to get another point into occultism on top of that. The question is, do I want to spread out into other skills entirely, or do I want to make my existing skills more powerful? It kind of could go either way. Oh, I can see a little seam in the world down there. Nope. Does that just lead back downstairs where we started? Oop, what is that? Oh, the ability to use the stairs is that button. That's probably the lobby down there. Ooh. Got one. Coins might be all that's on offer right now, though, but I think they might reward me regardless. Von Volner. Volner. Herr Volner. Coins could be pretty missable, too. It seems like you have to walk pretty close to them before they show up sometimes. Vindicating any excess time I spend exploring. Unless I don't find things, then, uh, that'll be embarrassing. Can't go up there yet either. Nope. Oh yeah, you can't walk at all. You have, to, you have to click on the thing. And if the thing ain't saying go, you ain't going. Ooh. Got two pieces of devil's thorn and two more pieces of honey. I'm checking the desks back and forth rapidly with my eyes. Just trying to see if there's any coins sticking out, because I've started spotting the coins before the game prompts them now. I think this, that seems like a visual glitch. I don't think candlelight can flicker like that, and we don't- do we have electricity yet? A golden elixir cures all your negative alterations. You cannot carry more than five. All negative alterations. I haven't even seen a negative alteration yet. Ooh. A few leaves out of an old encyclopedia. Pages of an encyclopedia is the Yeah, that's definitely candlelight that's flickering. Ooh, I'm at one of three. Dennis and Diderot and Jean Diderot and Roland Lamper. 150 academics and scholars contributed to the production of this first synthesis of new human knowledge. Cannot be equipped unless you get all the pages, but it gives me science, linguistics, and erudition. That's a lot. That's multitasking right there compared to the other stuff, but you have to, you have to, you have to work for it. It's a huge building. game definitely has a hand, handful of bugs so that they'll hopefully patch. For a few reasons, it might be best for people to wait before starting this game. Uh, both because it has seemingly some visual bugs, but also 
Uh, it's an episodic game, so this series will probably cut off abruptly at some sort of climactic moment. And then we'll probably come back and wait once the uh, additional episodes come out, we'll continue forward. I don't even know how many there are, but I got the code for the season, the full season, so we'll be getting to it all eventually. Unless something weird happens, like cataclysmically playthrough ending Lee bad. The quorum guide. Ooh. So something good for yep, etiquette. So collecting uh exploring's working for me. Finding coins for experience, finding things that will help me level skills. And I'm also just blatantly stealing. So it's a good thing I'm a thief spec on my character build, otherwise it'd be out of character and weird that I'm just stealing everything. Because I am just taking everything I can find, which is concerning. Um... Okay. Monsieur Napoleon Bonaparte is just going to show up at some point. We're just going to meet Napoleon. Alright. Napoleon and, and Washington are just going to be in the same room, I guess. Like, no biggie. That's a thing. See how that goes. A Byzant. A Byzant. That's, what, four coins? Five. We're way up there. I say based on nothing, because I have no metric to compare it to of any kind. And now we are back where we started, I believe. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Yep. Duke Manuel Godoy. Godoy. I think my room was right here. Huh. That's me. Yep. 